good morning all of you and welcome to the webinar on the great conjunction uh, organized by regional science center and planetarium calicut i am jain gangguni and with me mr manash bachchi we are all from uh, regional science center and planetarium calicut and uh, we will be speaking uh, something about uh, uh, this conjunction uh, because the thing is the event is going to happen tomorrow and at least a lot of people have shown a lot of enthusiasm to measure the angles between the things as we will be discussing and tomorrow also we would like a lot of people to uh, go and see this particular event in calicut we are arranging this thing in the beach so um, sir how do you feel about uh, the uh, event as such yeah actually uh, i would like to mention one thing here that uh, planetary conjunctions doesn't really happen as an event as if all on a sudden it talkers it's a very slow and gradual process during the whole of 2020 these two planets jupiter and saturn they were pretty close and uh, during march time also they were close they were coming closer and closer uh, what will happen is they will continue in their path and uh, come to the nearest conjunction on 21st that is why we are calling it an event uh, but uh, if you actually observe in the sky you will find that it's a slow and gradual development uh, and even after that it's not that that immediately after the event uh, uh, everything fizzles out and nothing is visible anymore actually people should keep on observing after yes, that yes yeah. even after that you will see them slowly going apart but there is one point of course in it and that is the position and location of the occurrence yeah. uh, that we will subsequently discuss uh, yes. uh, in our uh, discourse yeah so now uh, this is in our uh, science center and planetarium we had done a workshop on cross staff making so it is something it is a device actually it is a mechanical as well as an electronic device we have proposed two types of designs and that we, uh, participants can actually measure the angular separation between these two planets mm -hmm. so uh, this is a picture taken by one such participant from our workshop and she has captured it using her camera on 1812 and it is quite good isn't it by capturing it is quite it's good. quite it shows quite enthusiastic uh, students and public who are showing lot of interest in such types of event but uh, let us see what is so what is so why such things even soccer and what is so special about uh, if at all we call it as a special what is it actually how it all begins so let us uh, uh, see how actually athletes actually move around uh, in a uh, track so this is a small clipping which we have taken from our 1982 asian games and i was in class 4 uh, that time and pt usha actually missed the medal uh, by a uh, fraction of a second but you see that uh, as athletes are moving around uh, somebody is trying to overtake somebody else now uh, i think uh, this is the catch point which we want to bring out in this particular uh, geometry also that uh, uh, different uh, different athletes are moving at different speeds in different track and uh, based on their speed uh, here actually one thing is there that their uh, speed is not uh, means it is uh, vary yeah, our planetary speed also vary but not in the same way as the satellite speed so let us see let us see how actually the planetary motion occurs so you can see that here the planets are moving uh, in uh, their respective orbits uh planets uh, actually all the planets uh, are moving around the sun and uh, they move at uh, orbits which are uh, somewhat stable in, in, in fact they are stable there are perturbations but uh, they are stable and mostly except our neptune and uh, our past uh, x planet the so called pluto their angles were a bit uh, the plane of their orbits are tilted but most of them are in the same plane as the um, um, in the same plane which we call the ecliptic plane and this is where actually all the planets are moving around and in the process what happens is that you see that these two giant planets that is our um, saturn and jupiter uh, they actually uh, try to overtake like the uh, uh, like the athletes and at a certain interval of time say we will come uh, to all these things uh, uh, at a specific interval 19.85 years uh, we see that uh, they align in a somewhat uh, alignment so uh, sir can you just uh, speak something about yeah, it is this? nothing abnormal uh, when uh, 
we, we, we all have uh, probably worked on similar problems in our junior classes in mathematics yeah. where two different cars uh, are traveling at two different speeds and we have to calculate and they start with a basic difference uh, between them and we have to calculate uh, when both of them will meet or whether they will meet at all uh, given their velocities. It, was a, it is the same thing here. Yeah. Once you know what is the difference of their average orbital velocities, of course point to point in values, but if you can calculate the average orbital velocities and you know uh, how long it will take for the Jupiter to complete one uh, rotation around the Sun and the same thing, uh, what is the orbital period for Saturn, and then you can find out that uh, uh, after Jupiter completes uh, uh, one and uh, one complete turn and two-third of the next turn and uh, Saturn is more or less about two-third on completion of its one circuit, they will really coincide. And this, things, this thing will change, this thing will occur regularly. So there is a 20 year, almost 20 ish yeah. uh, years uh, cycle about it. Uh, it is not very abnormal. Such planetary conjunctions, and when we say planet, if we can also consider in them uh, the uh, sun, moon, and all. If they are not planets, we definitely know. But uh, uh, of course, uh, if we consider them to be similar objects, uh, then even eclipses are similar phenomena. So, all such uh, alignments they regularly happen. All such occultations they regularly happen. We give different names to them. And uh, a very interesting observation is. Uh, uh, Somewhat about last one decade or a little more than that, uh, when we studied our own Indian scriptures uh, uh, written in different vernacular, particularly in one book in Kannada, it is found that uh, our ancient astronomers have also talked about such uh, conjunctions. Yeah. Uh, they used to call them Samagama or Ati Samagama. When they are very very close, they used to call it Ati Samagama. And, and one one such I think Yuddha also they used to call it. Yes, Yuddha. they used to call it Yuddha also, and uh, uh, as if it, it's a struggle between uh, yeah. the celestial objects. So, so these things were common, and even in our stone inscriptions uh, in some places, uh, they are mentioned. Of course, uh, probably they were not meant for doing astronomy. Uh, but they were celebrations of certain events and they were celebrations of, of uh, uh, certain winning of war and all that. Yes. But while doing so, they were so meticulous in mentioning their dates that they tried to mention also the celestial events that were happening at that time. And accordingly, those things came under proper mention and they have been recorded. So it's not that that people have not observed it. It, it has been observed, such conjunctions have been observed uh, throughout the period of uh, history. And uh, uh, yes, it is interesting, uh, but though if we try to find out too much meaning in it, probably there's none. Yeah, there's uh, but uh, yeah. it is interesting it's event to look at. Look at uh, how it folds out uh, is very interesting that far off uh, uh, two planets or two celestial objects uh, rotating in their own orbits. Uh, uh, come close and actually they don't come close even they appear to come close only yeah. in terms of angular distance yes. in terms of their real distance they are quite they far. are in their respective orbits yes they are in their respective orbits and which are quite stable yeah so as you can see in this picture the the orbital period of the planet jupiter the largest planet the gas giant in our solar system it is 11.86 years or around 4332.59 days so naturally per day how much it can move we have calculated it and similarly we have the orbital period of Saturn which is also a gas giant very large one of the second largest planet in our solar system its density is very less lesser than water in fact and it is 29.46 years uh, and it also moves uh, as has been shown in this slide per day how much so based on all this calculation actually uh, it has been found out that around 20 years that is 19.86 years uh, they are get aligned and that is what is called um, as a great conjugation so we will come back to it again conjunction, now, conjunction yes conjunction 
So now, uh, what happened is that, uh, let us speak a little about our zodiac. Now, this uh, particular, uh, our, this Jupiter and Saturn, at present, uh, it is in Capricornus. It is in the constellation of Capricornus. Now, all these planets are in a particular, uh, uh, actually, it is uh, in a particular, uh, it, all movements are surrounded by particular constellations. So, as viewed from the Earth, uh, it, uh, these planets appear to move in certain constellations, certain groups of stars and uh, based on which actually lot of human uh, 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 systems like calendars and all are made and lot of festivals are uh, put and you can see that uh, I think this demands a little explanation yeah that since almost all the planets and their satellites they tend to move more or less in a plane which is a plane so that is why if we extend that plane outside right up to the celestial sphere the star patterns of asterisms on which they ultimately meet we find them to be a belt and that is why when we are rotating in that plane it appears as if in the sky the sun and moon and the other planets they are always following a particular path we call that path in the sky the zodiac and uh, since uh, uh, it would be around us 360 degrees uh, if we take their speed particularly the sun's uh, motion is considered and it is considered that uh, uh, one area of in that belt uh, uh, that the sun covers uh, in one month uh, that is considered to be one, one zodiac month. and zodiacal sign yeah. but uh, uh, since Earth has got a precision also, this zodiac is, yes, it is stable more or less, but that too changes. Uh, earlier, we used to know that there are only 12 zodiacal asterisms, yeah, yeah. Uh, but now even Oficus. Oficus comes into it, so it is 13. So, the people who try to associate uh, uh, certain kind of fatalism and certain kind of future predictions with all these totally those unscientific. are yes totally that unscientific. unscientific that yeah. has got no connection no relation but so for the positioning of the planets are considered uh, it is helpful to think in terms of zodiacal signs uh, and accordingly we can very easily identify them in the sky and we can very easily talk about it by saying as if we are saying right now that they are in Capricornus yeah. so you just go out find the astralism Capricornus and you can tell where yeah. it is yeah. that is how it is easier for communication but otherwise uh, digging up too much meaning into it uh, would be yeah. futile yeah. And as we as we have already said you that these planets are moving in their respective orbits and they are at varying distance from the sun and they are moving at a particular means they are moving at an average velocity which uh, though fluctuate because the orbit is elliptical or oval uh, the speeds also varies there are certain formula formulations through which actually we can uh, it follows the Kepler's law so we can calculate the speed at a particular point in its orbit but average on an average actually we can see that how long it stays in and it can be calculated and if we find and find out how long it stays in each zodiacal sign as I didn't explain to you just now. So Jupiter actually stays for around one year, Saturn stays for two and a half years and Sun and Moon are very small in this day, one month and say Moon stays for two and a half days. The moon moves out through the through the sky, we see them. So this is the important, this is what is the, what is, uh, uh, what can be assigned to the zodiacal sign. The, the, yeah. This in a way is also a reflection of the distance uh, between yeah, yeah, us yeah, and yeah. these celestial Plan, because, objects. Because the farther the objects the slower, the yeah. more time. In fact, when we train. move in train, we can see all these the yes, trees and exactly. all they move are very far away, you know, they move very slowly, but yes. near things objects yes. move very faster to us. So that is so this is what if somebody would have observed this for a certain duration of time say from november to uh, 21st up till that it is been shown here uh, you will see that the separation that is that is separation between saturn and jupiter uh, it goes on decreasing and people were trying to measure and uh, actually uh, calibrate and measure and find out whether these measurements are tallying with the theoretical measurements that is just an activity it may not have a great scientific uh, significance but still as a scientific activity as a activity for students and amateurs people can uh, do all these things no, I don't exactly say so I yeah. definitely come that uh, uh, if you can find out that our 
predictions exactly match with the experimental observations that is a corroboration of our uh, solidity of our theory as well yes, yes. because that shows that we understand the motions and the dynamics exactly yes, and yes. Uh, the way we play. in fact in physics it is the basic uh, uh, objective of any physics uh, endeavor is to predict a system yes. and we can predict only which is predictable we try to understand the laws and rules and if we understand them well yeah. then we can predict them with certain kind of accuracy. Yeah. Here it is seen that we can calculate it with fair degree of accuracy yeah. and very correctly we can assume things. In fact, uh, I remember Feynman, one of the greatest physicists, he says that a scientific theory is valid. Uh, how beautiful the theory is, how mathematically elegant the theory is, it is valid until it is corresponds to an uh, experimental exactly. experiment. Exactly. Once it, it is out of experiment, of experiment, it has to be thrown out. So, yes. so uh, okay, these are the good uh, things which we can do with an open lab. Anybody can do with all these things. So, before moving further, uh, let us uh, actually, uh, we are measuring, I have shown you in the last slide, uh, we were measuring the separation. Now, how actually people measure the separation? For a common man, I think we, we will just give a small uh, uh, thing. See, in sky, everything is an angular measure. We don't have centimeters, meters, kilometers in the sky. Uh, all the measurements between, because everything is modeled on a sphere, so everything is at angle. So, we have uh, this uh, angle of one degree and we know that one circle is 360 degree so on a circular measure scale circular scale which we call uh, each of this angle can be further subdivided into uh, one arc minute so one degree is subdivided into 60 arc minute and one arc minute is subdivided into 60 arc seconds so here you can see on that particular scale uh, a moon is around a half a degree or 30 arc minute uh, so that is that is the way so when we speak about uh, say 0 0.1 degree apart so you have to look at from the, that particular perspective they are they are so nearby so this is how actually we measure the uh, elevation from a particular sea. This is the horizon where actually things set, rises and sets and this is the elevation. So for this particular uh, EM, uh, this uh, conjunction, visibility of the conjunction in the evening at around 7 o'clock, it will be around 23 degrees in the southwestern south part of the sky. So uh, you have to look at those angles only, those elevated angles and you have to plot out. It, it will be bright enough to see there. And to see, because always it may not happen that you have to have a sophisticated instrument or a crossbar. You can use your fingers, use your hand to actually measure certain uh, angles. So in, in astronomy, this amateur astronomy actually, this is quite uh, convenient. So that we have one thing as it is shown in this picture, or we have one finger corresponds to one degree, uh, say three fingers, five degrees and so on. So you can actually find out upper, though you can't uh, very precise, small uh, separations like what we are trying to do in this uh, uh, particular uh, conjunction you can't do it with uh, these types of crude ways but anyway you can do such activities for other objects in the sky so that is the reason actually we have included that and you see that there are certain for example I have shown you that we, uh, how moon is a uh, half a degree but that also varies uh, depending on where the position of the moon is, where it is in apogee or perigee or, uh, and how uh, whether earth is in um, uh, aphelion or perihelion. So all these factors matter to get the angular size of the moon. So you can see that the moon appears at a certain, uh, its angular size increases as we... Uh, Simply speaking, if it is closer, it yeah. appears bigger. Yeah. If yeah. it is farther, it appears smaller. Yes. It is as simple as, as, simple that. as that. Yes. So when the moon is at the closest distance, it appears in a sky, even its angular diameter appears to be a little bigger than when it is and uh, And one common thing which people normally ask is that when moon rises certain times, we see that the moon is very big. But uh, actually that is an illusion. Uh, actually that, is, that, that is an atmospheric mm -hmm. effect yeah. because of the density of the and atmosphere. And neighboring rise. trees and objects and all, it yes. appears bigger. It's so that is not... Uh, that, yeah. It is not really a physical effect. Physical effect. And for this particular, uh, uh, this one, this is the actual, the, as we have already said you, uh, wherever this are is there. So you can see the position of the, uh, the moon is in a uh, small crescent phase and we have Saturn and Jupiter. It is in the cap corners, it is near the Capricornus or uh, just uh, uh, in the boundary of the Capricornus and there are other constellations and you can see that the altitude is around 23 degrees. So you have to look at in the southwestern yeah, here's sky. Here's a question. Yeah. Actually, when should you look at it uh, that is? an important point. Yeah. The point is uh, we cannot see 
other objects in the sky unless and until the sun is down at least 6 degrees below the horizon yeah. we call that uh, we call that civil twilight yeah. Yeah. so this when the civil twilight sets in then the object must be high up in the sky to facilitate us to observe it yeah. but the problem with this particular thing is that uh, if it is within 10 degrees of the horizon once again then in almost all the cities and all the real scenarios all the household scenarios uh, there are so many plants there are so many houses uh, anything below 10 degrees is a difficult object to look yes. at and watch uh, this is just barely at that level so when the civil twilight happens in our place or in most of the places in India uh, this particular combination the Saturn Jupiter duo right now is uh, close to 20 degrees or so yeah. and it will come down fast towards the western side because uh, of the rotation of the earth they will set and they will set early uh, in fact the real conjunction on 20 but I mean not real I would say the uh, peak conjunction uh, on 21st December is likely to happen at uh, 11.50 yeah. If I am yeah. not yeah. wrong, yeah. yes, 11:50, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, even in our Calicut uh, or Kodikor, uh, it will it will not be. In the Jupiter will set uh, uh, somewhere uh, about uh, 7:30 or 8. Uh, no, 8:20. 8:20. Okay. Precisely. So 8 precisely 8:20 the Jupiter but sets. One one thing I would like to say: we in this uh, equatorial zone, we are lucky enough actually to see. If you are in Canada or uh, USA. Uh, I, I, actually, you can't see this event uh, very properly. First of all, uh, atmospheric problems there. It's very cold and it's uh, quite misty. And secondly, it is not in the sky. It, it sets by uh, uh, 6 o'clock or something, I think it sets there. Yes, so, even in the northern uh, part of our yeah. country, it sets earlier. Yeah, 7.40 so in Calcutta. So, here know. in south, uh, we are that way a little bit uh, favored uh, that we can see it a little longer. So up to 8.20 and even from Bombay at this time, setting time is 8.20, yeah. uh, it will be close by. Uh, so that's the fact, uh, so that is the place where you should look at if you want to really see it, uh, you must look at the western side of the sky around 20 to 30 degrees yeah. and uh, you must uh, look close to Capricornus. And a uh, beach should be a sea beach should be a right place to Provided the beach is uh, the try the observation, side. and that is why because in sea beach you get a far more greater expanse of the horizon than you have in any other place, and that is why from the regional science center and planetarium Calicut we are planning to organize one uh, watch party at the sea beach itself, but of course maintaining the COVID protocols uh, and provided uh, clouds do not uh, and spoil. provided the yeah, of course the weather. The clouds are not there to spoil the party, uh, but we have to maintain the COVID protocols. We have to be careful about that. So maintaining that, we will try to organize uh, an event there with our telescopes. Now this is another important point that I would like to mention that normally when you look at the planets, they are in the sky in such a position that it would be rather difficult to point towards two planets within the same field of view yes. uh, with a telescope. Yeah. When you look at the planet, uh, the planets would be far off. So, in a single attempt, you probably would see only one planet. But since uh, this, these two planets are in conjunction, they are coming close. It's a great opportunity to look both of them yes. within the same field of view and that gives us some kind of pleasure to see two planets so close by and not only them, uh, if you are lucky enough, if the atmosphere is helpful, if you have a more or less uh, good access to a workable telescope then probably you will also see the terrestrial plan the satellites of these planets yeah. uh, so jupiter would be accompanied by four of its terrestrial satellites and try to find out whether you can differentiate the planet because that is one test of the eye because it is not perfectly aligned 1.1 1 .1 degree difference is there we will yes and there are several cues actually yeah. uh, jupiter would be far more brighter whenever 
two conjunctions happen and then uh, one of the planet would always be much brighter than the other yeah, yeah. when the uh, venus and jupiter conjunction happens or the venus that is more spectacular <laughs> spectacular in a sense uh, a little more brightness yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, here also the jupiter would appear brighter than saturn so uh, the Dima one you can always identify as Saturn, but uh, Jupiter is accompanied by four of its terrestrial satellites. Uh, so if you can see them in the telescope, uh, uh, that gives you a confirmatory indication that it is Jupiter. Yeah. Uh, Titan can be seen with Saturn, Saturn. Uh, probably yeah. one more satellite. Uh, so that gives an interesting spectacle and uh, that changes over time because the satellites around Jupiter and Saturn, uh, they will change their positions so much faster uh, than we normally expect the planets to move in. Yeah. And that is that would be quite visible. So overall, uh, it's an extravaganza that yeah, that is of yeah, interest. Yeah, yeah. And now, uh, as we were speaking about this angular separation, we were speaking about it is a small angle. No, this time it is around 0 0.1 degree. You have to. So uh, you see that. See around. Uh, if you everybody of us are it familiar. Is six up minutes. Yeah, six up. So everybody, everybody is familiar with this constellation. This is our Ursa Major, uh, Saptarishi bundle or uh, the Great Bear. And uh, we have two double star, Adunduti and uh, this one, Vashishtha. Uh, so or Alkar and Mizar, what it is called. Its separation is around two degrees. So it is taken as a, a test of eye in many cases to find out whether you can resolve it without a telescope. So that is 0.2 degrees. So this is closer than that. So yeah, this is further at us. So that is the reason we were thinking. So now all these things actually, what is a conjugation, uh, uh, conjunction, I'm sorry, uh, it's not conjugation, conjunction. So what is a conjunction? So uh, before uh, explaining, uh, because we are say, saying about great conjunction, so so they are using a word called conjunction. So let us just uh, uh, try to focus on what is that particular thing. So uh, you are seeing that in this slide, there is something called a word called elongation. The elongation is actually an angle uh, at the earth from the earth between two um, heavenly objects in the sky so that is uh, for example here it is uh, uh, say one planet in a planet and uh, the sun so it gives a angle so that is that is called an uh, kanja uh, means elongation now if if it so happens that earth is in the center and uh, we have uh, one of the planet uh, for example, in this case, the sun and the planet are opposite to each other. So, in this case, it is called, or uh, two planets are actually aligned. Here, actually, uh, 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 if they are in opposite direction, it is called an opposition. If they are in the same direction, uh, for example, here, sun and the uh, planet are in the same direction, or uh, two planets are in the same direction, well, sometimes three planets can occur in the same direction, very rarely. So, that is a conjunction. But if they are an opposite with respect to the earth, it is called uh, opposition and if they are perpendicular with respect to the uh, means uh, two objects are perpendicular uh, casting an angle of 90 degree at the earth it is called a quadrature so based on this now I think it is clear that what do we mean by a uh, conjunction uh, so if you yeah. can go back to the earlier slides yeah please, this I one like to yeah. mention one thing yeah. and that uh, elongation is an important measurement and not only that uh, uh, in this particular case, it is going to have an impact in the sense that uh, how far the sun is in uh, is at, in terms of angular position. That gives us the best chance of uh, seeing the conjunction. This time actually when this conjunction is going to the peak, the sun would be 30 degrees away. Mm. Uh, now, we can see it best when the sun, sun is uh, on the other side of it, yeah. it's in opposition, uh, yeah. then it is the best chance of seeing it, but this time that is not happening and that is why we will be able to see it only for In us. fact, many of these conjunction uh, when are in occurs, daytime. Uh, in daytime or just yes. before the uh, sunrise and yes. after, uh, before the sunset yes. or uh, just uh, after the sunrise or something like so that. that, so it, it, that, that it gets that difficult. That is important, that is why uh, even though the jupiter saturn conjunction has a periodicity of uh, about 20 years every 20 years it is not visible yeah because it happens during the daytime or it is too close to the sun yeah and uh, we can't see it. and this time we are lucky that it is uh, uh, at least we can see previous, from calicut or in southern states uh, we can see it better uh, and because the sun is 30 degrees away uh, yeah. 
So it could have been better if it is a little more further, but that yeah. is not the case. Yeah, yeah. So this is the geometry of our. Uh, this is the thing. What we will be. Uh, what is happening this particular time. And these are the actually. Uh, this is a plot uh, um, credits uh, to uh, amateur astronomer who has plotted this. Uh, you can see the theoretically calculated value. Uh, date wise is plotted. Uh, so you can see that it starts from if you have started observing these two separation from October onwards, it would have been a good exercise. Uh, it starts from 7 degree 19 minutes and it goes down to 0 0.06 uh, uh, minute or so uh, uh, minute. So you can see that how the separation goes on decreasing and actually it doesn't end. You can keep on uh, uh, observing it. Uh, for a few more days and you will see that how again it diver it again moves away and separation again increases so that would have been a more uh, good activity to uh, do for, it. The, for the little more involved uh, enthusiasts uh, i'd like to mention some exercises that can be interesting yeah number one those of you who has got certain interest in astronomical programming or numerical numerically creating or finding out situations uh, in astronomy uh, for them I can suggest that uh, uh, with Python you can program the astronomical events very nicely and uh, there is one library called PyFN which is this small for short form of ephemeris uh, using that PyFN E-P-H-E-M smaller form of ephemeris uh, you can get all the functions ready uh, with which you can calculate such things now let me give you a, an interesting hint at it uh, when does a conjunction really happen uh, if you go through the uh, geometry of it uh, you will find out that when the right ascension of two particular objects are the matching, same, matching. they are matching. Nearby. They're nearby. Uh, they're, they're matching. They are said to be in conjunction. Uh, the north, uh, the east-west uh, coordinate system actually. The east-west coordinates so when they match, then we call them in conjunction. Uh, but still, then to find out how much farther they would be, you can calculate the north-south. Uh, coordinate to between them the difference between them and when you do that uh, with numerical programming in your computer you can exactly predict where in past such conjunctions are happened and where in future such conjunctions will happen and uh, there are several uh, such calculations uh, they are fun they are also very demonstrative and uh, now, I have seen at least one project in which uh, right from the first AD, uh, the participants of that project, they had calculated all the conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn uh, right up to 16,000 AD. And that is very demonstrative. It shows uh, that most of the times Jupiter and Saturn conjunctions uh, happen within 1.5 degree. This time it is six arc minutes, which is pretty pretty close. But sometimes probably there will be a perfect alignment also. So in that case, it would become a transit, uh, so yeah, to say. Yeah. So, and and here in this picture, I would like to mention another thing as a project in this picture. That in this picture, it only shows the cosmic dance uh, created by gravity up to the peak of the conjunction. Uh, but uh, I would like to tempt uh, people uh, who are enthusiasts uh, to try uh, the simulation of uh, how it is going apart right from this moment yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, to some considerable standard. So probably uh, you can get uh, an interesting pattern if you plot both the approach towards the conjunction and, how, and uh, how it the diverging uh, In fact, from the conjunction. In fact, this separation can be measured by various ways. One of them was a cross step, and uh, cross step is a physical phys measurement. physical measurement. But actually, actually, each of these objects, no, as uh, it was explained to you just now, that each of them have a coordinates, so right ascension and declination, and we can measure the separation using spherical trig uh, spherical trigonometry. So there are formulas for measuring, and theoretically, uh, in that way only, uh, all the programs and all were developed, and you are seeing that predicted values are actually. Uh, given here so uh, with that uh, now uh, uh, is, uh, this is uh, closer uh, because on the December 21st 2020 uh, we had a uh, 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 
conjunction we will be having the conjunction um, and on july 16 the similar conjunction occurred uh, on 1623 so uh, uh, on july 16 we had uh, uh, around uh, 0.1 degree as i was telling and this time it is 0.06 uh arc minute so it is more closer than that particular conjunction and that occurred around 400 years back 397 in precise so there are other uh, thing actually this angular separation of these two planets uh, have been uh, for 20 years it has been uh, plotted for various uh, uh, dates you can see here and their angular separation you can uh, find out these Now, are when you have this image on screen uh, i'd like to bring in a few few more issues Uh, I have seen records in many places in popular level. It is being said that uh, the two planets, the two gas giants, will merge together. Now, one should not take these statements very literally. Yeah. Uh, the planets are not going to merge at all. They are quite uh, at a distance from each other. It would only appear to have merged in their disks uh, in the sky in angular terms. and that uh, creates uh, another very interesting uh, uh, popular concept uh, i must say and that whenever anything such happens in astronomy people immediately try to find out why it is special now let me tell you in astronomical dynamics uh, uh, yes very special and rare things are happen but in most of the cases these dynamic things are so much predictable that they happen all the time they happen at regular intervals they are not least, visible and though it may not be visible all the time but uh, yes it happens uh, all the time so but what happens is uh, people try to connect them to mythical observations uh, this particular conjunction has been quite uh, Uh, interesting in popular discussions uh, i'd like to take a minute or two about yeah, that yeah, yeah. Uh, because this time even though it is a complete coincidence uh, this conjunction is happening close to the winter solstice in fact on the yeah, winter solstice yeah. day itself uh, yeah. uh, that is 21st december yeah. it's a coincidence there's nothing special about it it just happened to be that this conjunction is happening on the winter solstice day yeah. but uh, Uh, we know about mythical stories uh, we know uh, that it is said in uh, christian myths that uh, uh, at the time of jesus birth uh, in, at bethlehem uh, certain special stars yeah, were yeah. visible it, and it is uh, in popular media now yes uh, it's in popular media and they are trying to find out whether this can be a um, an astro actual astronomical event uh, interpreted accordingly uh, I studied it a bit, and uh, I'd like to mention a few interesting things about it. Firstly, the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction, when it happens, there is so much of difference in brightness that when they come very close together, you don't see a very bright spark there. More or less, it would be the intensity of the Jupiter that is observable, and that will not be much. different but even though a little little bigger and a little uh, different shape yes that would be uh, seen but still hardly it could be the case of the bethlehem star as it was um, mentioned there then secondly is it a possibility really that uh, such a conjunction happened at that time or might be uh, a jupiter venus conjunction happened at that time if you calculate uh, through the possibilities uh, by taking the astronomical software and uh, the ephemeris uh, you will find out normally the christian scholars are no christian scholar but even then i just studied uh, the associated data a bit uh, the christian scholars normally assume that jesus probably was born between 3 to 4 bc and uh, we don't find any such conjunction Uh, at that time there was one jupiter saturn conjunction at 7 bc and there is one venus jupiter conjunction at 2 bc probably 2 bc would be a little too late uh, and 7 bc would be a little too early and not only that uh, there was a triple conjunction just uh, a little while back uh, we mentioned uh, that it's a rare occurrence but not that rare as well 
almost 10 percent of the conjunctions sometimes happen as triple conjunctions not only that in our indian scriptures there are mentions that even five to six planets can be aligned as well it has happened it would be certainly rare it would certainly be uh, not happening uh, at an interval of say 20 years or 40 years or may even uh, happen in uh, 100 years or so but it happens and uh, there is one simulation if you have an access to any astronomical simulation software you can try 25th march uh, 185 bc and you will find out that at one point of the sky you get uh, a a, a, a conglomeration of six planets together all the terrestrial planets which you can see with almost your naked eye or with a little aid all of them came together in that position so there's nothing astronomically abnormal in such case it's just a play of the gravity and dynamics uh, that it happens here and uh, really speaking there is not much point in trying to explain mythical events in terms of the actual observations. Probably the people who created such creative pieces, they look at some real phenomena and then they extrapolate it and then they place it into a different imaginary setting in terms of space and time and situation and even in magnitude. So the direct correlation between all such events in most of the cases will not be very scientifically yielding uh, endeavor. And in fact, one more thing is that as normally is being said that uh, this uh, uh, the star suddenly appeared when the and yes, this is not a thing that so. suddenly appears. Uh, it is, uh, conjunctions it, it, do it, not appear it, it, gradually suddenly. from few it months. Gradually, uh, not only months, uh, probably throughout a year, because you have seen uh, that uh, Jupiter stays in it in one constellation uh, for about one year and Saturn stays in 2.5 years. Uh, so their drifting is very slow. Apparent drifting is very slow, and that is why this sudden occurrences do not happen in terms of planetary conjunctions it could be a planet it could be some nova or supernova we never know but uh, there are no such events recorded as well and hence uh, we cannot really find out meaning of mythical observations or mythical recordings uh, in terms of uh, real and observable scientific history and now uh, let us have a simulation of uh, uh, different uh, stations like from Calicut, how actually yeah, have we, we go We thought on? we must uh, present a case that if you are travelling over India, then what would be the position and condition of the con conjunction, how you would see? December month is only presented yes. here, this was Calicut, this is up till 31st and now we are going to Mumbai, you see that how it is changing from 1 to uh, 31st. Uh, we will be going each of these locations. Uh, In each location we show how the position will change and the quickly passing over object in the sky is moon. Yeah, 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 yeah. It will briefly appear. <laughs> now you are in Delhi. Delhi. So you can see how in Delhi it will vary over the dates that is shown on the right hand side of the screen. It's coming closer and closer and closer. This is almost a merger. The moon appears and goes more or less the same thing but see how close it is towards the horizon so it would be a very difficult thing to see it uh, a little late in the night we are in it, haryana now it is uh, yes it is haryana and uh, just close to the uh, sunset you can see it in kashmir uh, in kashmir here it begins uh, and uh, then you can see it will come closer and closer and it will go down towards the horizon as well as um, yes the moon once again comes and goes the pattern remains the same the sky pattern remains the same only the timing varies uh, and the duration through which you can see it that varies and you can see that in northern zones uh, the setting time is earlier uh, so uh, here in south we are favored a little so you can see a little later than uh, is expected from other parts of, of India and after Saturn the Jupiter will uh, uh, sorry I'm sorry Jupiter will set earlier and the Saturn will follow it uh, within one minute yeah. uh, so it's pretty pretty close 
yes the next yeah, uh, yeah. so now uh, we we see that see we still in this time this we have 0.06 uh, um, um, arc minute separation then in uh, 497 years back we had 0.1 arc minute separation so when actually it will be perfectly zero means it will just overlap from the earth now it has been calculated and it has been found out that in june 17th uh, 7541 that is 5521 years later i hope uh, good time to live uh, <laughs> i hope uh, i don't know uh, humanity should be there uh, then these two planets will be uh, certainly uh, aligned with perfectly aligned so Not that is much to it for uh, yeah. <laughs> and then we have some other uh, as we were describing you that we have other conjunctions also uh, not only jupiter saturn like we have mars venus and their respective dates in nearby that is the 2020 and 2022 uh, is given to you we have mars venus next year this uh, 2021 then mars saturn we have then venus jupiter we have mars jupiter we have so all this are conjunctions are they daytime or night time conjunctions that time actually we have to find out that the, the date i don't have now but uh, these dates we have the conjunction that we have to uh, see and uh, uh, we have to, we were speaking about triple conjunction you just now explained about five to six planet uh, aligning together so triple conjunction last it occurred in 1981 and the next will be occurring in 2223 so anyway that is not so nearby it is also uh, um, uh, it is also a thing so before we uh, i think the, this is the no uh, this one can you just uh, elaborate on this one yeah. uh, this is an interesting observation actually since jupiter and saturn they are the biggest planets in our solar system when their conjunction happens it is called a great conjunction jo i mean kepler actually labeled it as a very right. called it as yeah but and kepler while formulating his theory uh, he could exactly find out that such uh, uh, conjunctions may happen and it will happen and he also calculated from this uh, image uh, on the screen you can find out uh, it is an illustration from kepler's uh, book uh, the stellar nova uh, which was published in 1606 uh, and interesting you can uh, point out perhaps that this was even before uh, galileo's observation of the sky uh, at 1609 so even earlier to galileo's observation kepler predicted that such conjunctions will happen and he shows how successive jupiter saturn conjunctions will come up uh, and uh, they can always be plotted if they are plotted on a zodiacal circle then they will appear as if uh, 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 one triangle is ro rotating slowly and, shifting. and is, sequence shift. uh, shifting there is a sequence shift in that uh, and that shows the power of uh, theory and imagination and the power of unreasonable power and beauty of mathematics yeah, yeah. which can exactly predict such situations so, so that is why uh, we included this thing because we felt it important to show that kepler is the person who not only properly calculated the dynamics uh, who predicted such conjunctions uh, and who also gave a name uh, labeling this uh, particular conjunction a great conjunction what he said Uh, well, today probably we don't see anything much spectacular, interesting, but nothing spectacular that way. Uh, but at Kepler's time, uh, it was pretty remarkable that uh, in his uh, uh, head and by analyzing his data, uh, yeah. he could reach up to such conclusion. Yeah. So uh, now uh, I I would like to show one uh, this one uh, one small uh, animation which we had. See, there is a page uh, you can go through this page spark dot rise dot edu, uh, and you have a good article. It is the called, Rice University uh, astronomy uh, page. Yeah. Uh, where they mention and uh, show many calculations. They have beautifully done uh, analysis uh, for a common era of three thousand up till three thousand. And what we want to show you here is actually. uh the uh, animations with simulations which they have done uh, so you can see this this very well done so i would like to have uh, show this to our visitors see how well they have uh, animated the full se sequence and you can see that uh, how the alignment occurs as it goes through uh, the different uh, 
cycles. So consumption zero, consumption one, and consumption two are shown. Yeah. Uh, that is during one complete uh, rotation of uh, Saturn, we are likely to see uh, these many conjunctions uh, where both uh, where Earth and Jupiter will align with it. So similar simulations can be created for other celestial objects uh, as yeah. well. Uh, so we encourage you to go through the detail and find out how mathematically you can achieve them. You can program it yourself, you can create such animations yourself. Yeah. And those and will be these are the activities which should be taken up by actually yes, enthusiasts. So, can understand science. It, uh, how it can be done. so uh, the theoretically we have uh, come to an end for this webinar, but let us take some questions if somebody has any yes. questions. So I think uh, uh, Joel, can you just uh, uh, let us go to the other one, uh, where is the thing? OBS, uh, yeah. Just a minute, just a minute. Just a minute. Let us, this is okay? Fine? Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, so, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, we can try to answer you if you know. And <laughs> so, yeah, please, anybody. You are not audible. Uh, can you just. Uh, Come to range. Uh, the audio you just mean? Yeah, yeah, now it is fine. You can speak. Hello? Yeah, 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 it is fine. Sir? Yeah, please speak. Uh, sir, I was asking you. Yeah. The, what was that website or uh, that you have shown uh, us now? Oh, I will what do was that, uh, the I, paradise? I, yeah, I, I, I will have, uh, give you the uh, link in the chat box. You can go through it okay chat uh, okay. yeah so they are actually the rice university astronomy page if you go to here we give you the link we have actually given the link uh, uh, which you can follow uh, but even apart from that if you are interested you can always go to the rice university page and uh, they have a very good uh, astronomy page covering the astronomical events that is happening all the time uh, so, this is one of such pages where they have dealt with uh, this particular conjunction event, right? It is uh, right in your chat box. So, if you can see the chat box, you will find out the link. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Sir, what's yeah. the exact timing of the co conjunction from the Mumbai? From see, see, from uh, exact timing actually is 11.50 in the night and it is not in the Let sky. Let me tell you one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. The peak conjunction will happen at 11.50, right? By night. 11.50 by night, it would be the closest. But, but you, can, you can see it from Mumbai. Uh, say 5 p.m. to 8.20 p.m. but 8.20 would be very very close to horizon. If you have a clear horizon view from any position that you are, then you can see it up to 8.20, right? Okay. After that it will go below the horizon. But let me tell you, you don't have to wait that far. Even close to 5 p.m., you will see more or less the same scenario as you would be able to see at 11.50. With naked eye, you cannot make any differentiation between the peak conjunction and the conjunction approaching it. Okay? Yes. You Thank you, sir. Yeah. And sir, actually I have a telescope with power 10x, so it's not visible very clearly. What should the exact power to see that uh, conjunction very clearly? See, conjunction actually since these are bright planets, you can see it directly. Uh, uh, I, I mean, we see it with the naked eyes, but uh, with, uh, from telescope, telescope, what should be the power the of that eyepiece? Uh, telescope actually what you, you have to put the field of view say you have 10x or like that that is fine but morely actually you have to have a bigger mirror di what is your mirror diameter or uh, what is the aperture of your telescope uh, you, which, four, inch or, uh, four three inch to or five centimeters three to five centimeters sir no no, no mm -hmm. I, I think that is not the correct one the, uh, is it three to five centimeters is a very small aperture actually i got that for uh, uh, for that transit of venus 
How much you paid for that? How much you? What is the cost of that? We can process sir. From we can process it. They have given us. Okay, that is fine. But if it is a small aperture telescope, uh, anyway, for this particular case, it is fine. You will see some bright because they are quite bright. But uh, huh. if it is a bigger telescope only, you can see. But here, if you, what is the advantage of seeing this through a telescope is not the actual uh, separation between that you can always appreciate. But they are small. Mm -hmm. But you can see some satellites of those. Uh, Uh, planets involved like Saturn and Jupiter, their uh, Jovian satellites and Saturnian satellites. You can see them through a telescope. Let me mention you one thing: more than the zoom power, the 10x or 20x or so, it is important yeah. for a telescope to have a bigger aperture. So we will suggest that if you think of future, uh, even from the home use, it's better to have a 4-inch telescope. Close to 4-inch, 6-inch should be even better. better. But But uh, but they will uh, the bigger you go, they will Cost be costlier. Uh, but I think that four-inch telescopes are quite affordable, and if you can have a good four-inch, and I would suggest uh, in India we get a very good brand called Celestron. Uh, Celestron oh. makes Celestron make telescopes are quite good. So if you can have anything such, then I think it will be good watching tool. It is a good thing. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Yeah. Welcome. Anybody else? Okay, so I think we can conclude it. It is quite uh, we have gone quite long from ten to twelve. So thank you all of you who have participated and who have come and joined and who have left or whoever is it. So you have participated in this event and I hope you will be enjoying this particular uh, conjunction, the great conjunction. Don't miss it. And if you are in Calicut, just come uh, opposite to Corporation Building. We will be ready with our telescopes and probably we will webcast it. We will try to project it. Whatever possible, we will do. Provided of course, cloud doesn't spare, play spoil the full event. So thank you very much. Thank you once again.